What is going on, everybody? This is Devin, and thank you for joining me for another rousing edition of Application. Application is a vlog style video in which we discuss the truths of the Word of God and find ways to apply that to our everyday life. This vlog is a part of a content series that is found on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. You can check out the links below. And um, I would love for you to check it out. If you're on uh, YouTube, we would love for you to subscribe, comment below. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, share, comment, tag, let people know that it's out there. If it's blessing you, we hope it will bless somebody else. Um, and um, yeah, this month we are talking about the disciplines of our faith and what it looks like to be um, a disciple of Christ. Um, and the last couple of weeks we've discussed uh, a number of different things, um, but as far as a topic, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of a baseline what this is. And one, um, very simply put, the a discipline is something that you put in place that allows you to get from one step to another, right? An athlete uh, disciplines himself um, through exercise, uh, food, his diet, um, his time, his rest, in order for him to get from one place to another. Well, we have an example. Our example is Jesus Christ. And we are uh, we find our disciplines in faith because it allows us to uh, get from the place that where we are to the place where God wants us to be. And ultimately, that is to become more like Jesus. So our disciplines are set up in the Bible. It's very easy to find them. Uh, but whatever Jesus does to become who he is or to su substantiate who he is, that is what we should do. So uh, I have found in my study or my life um, 12 disciplines that I believe lead me to become more like Jesus. Now, again, as I said before, there is no scripture that is um, that says, hey, here are your disciplines. I didn't say that. But again, if you mark the life of Jesus as the perfect example uh, you could find what those disciplines are. So I have found 12. Um, others have found less than. And um, again, no one's perfect. I'm not saying that if you miss one, um, you know, uh, what was you? But you do want to, again, do your best to live a discipline, disciplined life so that you could become more like Jesus. Uh, and the 12 disciplines that I found are study of the word of God, prayer, fasting, confession, worship, fellowship, rest, celebration, service, generosity, uh, chastity, and disciple making. Um, so those 12 are the ones in which um, I have found in my life are um, disciplines that I would like to keep uh, for myself. And I think that helps um, help me become more like Jesus. And again, this is not to say that anybody would um, you would miss it if you forget one or if you don't catch one or if you don't do it perfectly, right? That's not the, not the, the goal here. The goal is that you would um, lend your life to these disciplines so that you could become more like Jesus. And that's the goal. The goal of life while we're on earth is to be more like Jesus. Worship helps be, me be more like Jesus. Chastity helps me be more like Jesus. Disciple making helps me be more like Jesus. Um, prayer, fasting, uh, service, all these things help me be more like Jesus. And today, we're going to discuss one, uh, if there's any on this list of mine that seems weird <laughs> uh, or seems out of place, that would be celebration, the, the discipline of celebration, the discipline of uh, celebrating life. And it's it's interesting because we don't look at celebrating as something that is a, a discipline because we think it's easy to celebrate, but it's not as easy as we think, one. And then two, it actually does bring us closer to who Jesus is in our, um, in our life. So I want to define celebration real quick. Let's define it. Bishop Google says that the definition of celebration, oh, this is a lot of it actually. It's interesting. 
Oh, okay. Um, the definition of celebration is the act of celebrating. Well, that helps. Um, a party or other or other festive event for celebrating something. Uh, and and the, the goal of the celebration, again, is to simply, um, uh, for the believer in a way, it's to uh, bring thanks or thanksgiving for something that happens in our life, right? Um, and I think the reason, for me, the reason why celebration is discipline is because we're not always as thankful as we want to be. A lot of times we can uh, falter in our understanding of Thanksgiving. Um, we don't always want to be thankful. We can't always find things to be thankful for. Um, so here's what I do, and I'm learning this. Again, I'm not something I've, I've, I've mastered, um, but I'll give you a, a kind of a life app here. If you're looking for things to be thankful for, here's what I do. And it's, it seems backwards, but it's been helping me lately, I would say. Um, I usually write down uh, the things that are are bugging me right now, right? Like, hey, like, just that just get on my nerves. Write them down. Um, and next to it, I will write down something I'm thankful for. And I realize once I start writing one or two things down, I realize just how much I have to be thankful for, right? Just how much I have to uh, to bless God for. In my life, like I could, I could put down um, that you know I had a hard week at the office. Um, you know, uh, the car is not working right, or um, inflation, or something we see on the news, right? But then I start kind of counteracting those feelings and celebrating and being thankful, and I start writing down, man, but that sickness that I had two weeks ago that I didn't think was gonna go, like healed me I remember like my, my kids are, are are aligning themselves to good behavior right my wife is still as beautiful as the day I met her like all these things you get to write down and you get to kind of compare and you realize man there's so much more to be thankful for than it is to be uh, to like to to, to, to uh, think negatively about and the the need to celebrate these things um is what I believe is necessary in um, the Christian life. It enhances your life. It builds your life when you live a, a life of thanksgiving unto him, right? Uh, I read this. Um, it's from uh, a blog, uh, Simply Elliot. And I, I, I uh, don't read a lot of blogs, personally. Um, but as I was studying celebration, this came up and I thought it was beneficial. I want to read it to you. Um, she says, celebration gives strength to life. The discipline of celebration. Celebration gives strength to life. Nehemiah 8 and 10. Um, we may, we may be able to begin tennis instruction or piano lessons by dint of will, but we will not keep at them for long without joy. Wow. In fact, the only reason we can begin is because we know that joy is the end result. Man, that is what sustains all us novices. <laughs> they know there is a sense of pleasure, enjoyment, joy, and mastery. Celebration is central to all the spiritual disciplines. Without a joyful spirit of festivity, the disciplines become dull, death-breathing tools in the hands of modern Pharisees. I'll read that again. Without a joyful spirit, celebrative spirit, without a, without a joyful spirit of festivity, the dis disciplines become dull, death-breathing tools in the hands of modern Pharisees. Every discipline, this is what I want to cut up here, every discipline should be characterized by carefree gaiety and a sense of thanksgiving. Joy produces energy. Joy makes us strong. Man, the connection between true celebration and joy is so close, right? We know the scripture, the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? 
And 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 I want to bring clarity to that joy of the Lord. The, the, not necessarily the joy that the, he gives us, because he does give us joy. But finding delight in or joy in the Lord gives us strength. It gives our life meaning. It gives our life strength. It builds us in a way that uh, it just removes all negativity, not for us from not not from our thinking, because we're going to see it, we're going to experience it, man. We're going to be in tough times, but as long as we keep our joy and remain disciplined in our faith, man, God is saying to us that that it becomes a little bit more easier to manage the the the, the waves of life that come. Right, we become strong when we realize. That God is fully our joy. We become strengthened when we can put our whole life, our whole being into who God is. She says this, joy produces energy and joy makes us strong. Like that, that the necessity to, 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 to be satisfied with him and, and to be joyous in him is, is so I, I can't even overspeak it. Like, we, we are bombarded daily, not even weekly, daily. We are bombarded daily with so many things that could weigh our conscience down, that could, that could hurt us, that, could, um, that, is, that is detrimental, that is uh, just a lot of bad news, Right? We see it every day on social media. So it's it's almost like, why wouldn't we want, why wouldn't we desire a, a, a life in godliness in which, not that I can shut out everything in the world, because that, that now keeps me ignorant of what I need to pray for, but that I can see it. And that if I'm so different in my approach and who I am as a believer, what's the difference? I don't go into depression. I don't uh, uh, willfully fall into anxiety. No, but I, I have something to counteract what I'm facing, right? And that is joy. That's a celebrate. That that's that's the understanding of who God is. Man, my hope for you, as you're listening to this, as you're seeing this, is that you would find purpose in the joy of the Lord, that you would find strength rather in the joy of the Lord, that you would, that you would make it your uh, daily habit to purposefully seek after the joy of the Lord and to, and to intentionally set up times of celebration, right? There is, there is, there is no more joy. I like when I take my sons to get a haircut, one of the things that we do, um, is we put down all the windows, we put on like Lecrae or or Swoop or even Ty Tribute or whatever, and we just we, we just sing all the songs loud as we can, rap all the songs. Like we're dancing, we're like all like like all of that. And I'm talking about I, I could have had the hardest day, but 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 Making that intentional step to find joy, making that intentional step to embrace joy, it gives me so much strength. Intentionally finding the scriptures in the word that allow for my joy to be fulfilled, allow for my, my strength to be complete. Man, that gives me so much joy. Right, this is crazy. I just I just opened this up. Wow. I'm gonna read this. I, I just opened this up. Right. Discipline of, of celebration. <laughs> I just um, Psalms 146. Um, the subtitle: The happiness of those whose help is the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God. While I have my being, 
Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Wow. His spirit departs. He returns to the, his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Wow. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. This is why we celebrate. This is why we celebrate. Not uh, uh, celebrate God, right? We celebrate because we have this confidence. We celebrate because we know that he's able to do all that he said he would do. And he has a proven track record, right? The songwriters are now saying we, we have history. Like we, we know that he's able to do what he said he would do. And that gives us so much joy, right? That strengthens my life, man. I want to read this last thing. Celebration um, is at the heart of the way of Christ. You can reference Luke 2 and 10, John 15 and 11, uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19. I want to read this part. Such a radical, divinely enabled freedom from possessions uh, and a reconstructing of social arrangements cannot help but bring a celebration. Freedom from anxiety and care forms the basis of celebration. I'm say it again. Freedom from anxiety and care forms the basis for celebration. The carefree spirit of joy and festivity is absent in the contemporary society. You, 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 this world makes you become so hardened, right? The world and, and the news that happens, it makes you become so hardened, so 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 bogged down that it's it you can't be as free and, and happy as you want to be. And sometimes it's looked upon looked down upon as why is he so happy? Why is he she doing too much. Like we've seen, we come on, we've seen people in church who who have so much joy. And we're like, man, they're doing too much. There was this guy in the church <laughs> I used to go to. Brother Eric. I love Brother Eric, man. And Brother Eric was the exemplification of of doing too much <laughs> um, beautiful Nigerian family um, but he, he's one of those guys who um, was I didn't understand it then but I understand it now he was so en enthused and so so confident in God so confident in in his in his understanding of who God was, that you couldn't stop him from exuding this this loud, exuberant, over the top, giddy joy. You couldn't stop him, right? And he would often, <laughs> he would often, he he would often be so exuberant in his in his celebration or praise. That we, we would know him by just how loud he clapped. Like, uh, you know, we, we would, the worship leader would say, well, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. And you would just hear him clapping so loud. Blah, 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 blah. Or he would be like, yes, hallelujah. And, and, and I realized in talking to him that he, his confidence in God was so strong that that it, it 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 postured him in a way that no matter how he's feeling at the time because he went through things no matter what uh, uh, was going on around him because he lived in the same world we lived in that he was going to be he was going to be in a in a in a 
posture or a mindset of celebration at all times. He was going to make sure that when he worshiped, when he praised, it was going to be loud. It was going to be joyous. He was going to celebrate the God of his salvation at all times. And there was nothing you could do to stop him. Joy was in his life and the world clearly didn't give it to him, but the world clearly could not take it away. And that's what celebration is all about for me. That's what the discipline of celebration has to be. We have to be in a place where we are so uh, 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 fortified in the in the joy of the Lord that the world can't take away that celebration, that the world can't remove that need to celebrate, that desire to celebrate God. And not just celebrating what God is doing in you and around you, but man, celebrating what God is, is doing in others, celebrating what God is doing in the life of others. That is true joy. That is true celebration. When we can come into a place and be surrounded by all the things we're surrounded by in this world and still live a life of exuberant praise and celebration unto God. That, my friend, is what God is calling us to. And it's not easy. That's why it's a discipline. It's a discipline to be in a celebratory mood. have to be we got to celebrate you got to celebrate jesus's first miracle was to enhance celebration turning water into wine you got to go out let me talk to some of us homebodies get out the house go celebrate go have fun my my one of my spiritual dads, Jimmy Rollins, was huge on on having fun, celebrating. Something happened in your life, man, go celebrate. Go do something. <laughs> like the 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 need to do that, the discipline in that is so is so that you understand, man, God is good and he is worthy of that praise. He's worthy of it. And he wants us to be in a place where we can celebrate him. And celebrate what he's doing. So, uh, just as an application. Find ways and time in which you can um, uh, celebrate God for what he's done. Celebrate God for what he's doing in you and in others. And rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Like, find ways in which your joy can be made complete. Joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't be weak right now. Don't be weak. Don't be weak. Find ways in which you can have your joy complete. Let me pray for us. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this um, uh, two articles that I that I read before uh, I did this about um, or well, I was not did this but I was studying um, about celebration. Um, I'm gonna put it down below. Read them; they're really good. Like I don't have time to give you. I have I'm keeping my time constrained. I can't give you everything that I've learned, and I want these I want these talks to be more carefree. Um, but I'll give you a little bit more of what I learned below in the notes and you can check it out for yourself but my prayer is that you would find joy and express it and be disciplined in celebrating what god is doing what god has done what god will do in you and in the lives of others father i pray for just um all those who are hearing today i pray that their heart would be um full of joy full of your joy, full of your joy, full of your joy, uh, and that they would express that joy in celebration, celebrating the strength that you have given us, uh, knowing who you are, and then also celebrating, Father, what you will do in the future. Uh, We thank you. We honor you. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Again, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, Facebook, Instagram, share, tag, repost, all that stuff. We love you. Um, stay tuned for the more uh, more content throughout the week on our pages. Links are below. And um, love you guys. Peace out.